in the rugged realm of two wheeled legends where engines roar and adventure awaits, two titans have emerged from the shadows. The sun-kissed valleys and treacherous mountain peaks quivered in anticipation as a Ducati Multiswada V4 Rally and the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R prepared for their legendary clash. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to yet another very, very exciting video. Because in today's video, we're going to be discussing the differences between the brand spanking new 2023 Ducati Multiswada V4 Rally. Yeah, the touring travel adventure motorcycle from Ducati versus my own 1290 KTM Super Adventure R. Is this 27,890 euro Ducati worth the extra money above my 21,699 euro KTM? Let's find out and let me know by the end of this video which one you prefer, the Ducati or the KTM? Underneath the KTM we have the 1290 well-known LC8 engine, the lightest, most compact engine in the segment that actually produces 160 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. That is a lot. So Ducati is like hold my bear and we are going to put our V4 Gran Turismo engine in it, producing 170 horsepower and 121 newton meters of torque. Lacking a little bit of torque there, Ducati. But make no mistake, this engine has got some MotoGP roots in it. Oh, it's a fast one. Now the average fuel consumption is 5.6 liters on the KTM and it's got a 23 liter gas tank. And the Ducati is doing 6.5 liters on 100 kilometers and now it has the bigger 30 liter gas tank. But of course it is a big difference if you're just cruising on low RPMs or ride it like you stole it. From my experience riding these two motorcycles you can do about 350 to 400 kilometers on average on one gas tank. Now the Ducati has something that the KTM does not have. It actually shuts down the rear cylinders if you're just cruising around or standing still at a traffic light. Better emissions, lower fuel costs, and if you're at a traffic light, it's not going to cook your eggs down there, if you know what I mean. But of course you do need the heated seat then for winter times, you know. Both bikes also have a 15,000 kilometer service interval, so that is kind of good for your wallet. Now when it comes to Greta's favorite and CO2 emissions, we got 100. Now enough about the engine specs, let's start them up, heat them up and uh, play a little bit with that throttle. Both bikes come equipped with the Akrapovich. As on the Ducati, the silencer is not out. On the KTM it is, but yeah. Now when it comes to wind therapy, well this is actually the highest setting for the KTM one. It's got this rally inspired short screen. As you can tell, I'm full on head into the wind, which is kind of cool if you're doing some off-roading. And if I turn it all the way up, it is like that. So we still have some wind. It is fairly good on the highway. I can't really complain about it. It's good enough for me. But if you're looking at it from a Ducati perspective, this is a lot better. And it's also easy to manually put it up. See that? It's even better. Yeah. Both motorcycles come equipped with cornering lights. And that's actually pretty helpful if you're going to do some midnight trails. Now I can already see you thinking, who the hell is going to take a big buffalo like this off-road in trails? I am. Now the dry weight of the KTM of course is 217 kilograms. As for Ducati, it's 227 kilograms. So the Ducati is heavier as the KTM. But we're talking about dry weight. You cannot ride a motorcycle with the dry weight because it does not have fuel, it does not have oil, it does not have lube. So now I had to do some math and I don't like doing math. So we got 227 grams of dry weight Ducati, we got 30 liters of fuel and one liter of fuel is about 720 grams. So that's about 21.6 kilograms of fuel. Now the Ducati weighs 240 kilograms with the oil and cooling liquids inside and we got like 261.6 kilograms. And I know that might scare a lot. But make no mistake, if you've ever been riding these things off-road, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's actually pretty doable. 
The only problem is if you have to pick it up from the ground, yeah, then, then, it's, then it's a little bit heavy. Now on the KTM, we have a seven inch display and when it comes to riding modes, we have rain, off-road, rally, street and sport. As for the Ducati, we have a six and a half inch display and all the modes we have is touring, enduro, urban and sport. You can connect your phone to both motorcycles without any problems and play some music with it, make those important business calls and you can also do some navigation with it. Now with Ducati you need the Ducati Connect app and the Sigic app for navigation and you have to keep your phone unlocked for some reason. I was just playing around with the navigation, have to keep my phone unlocked and yeah after even five minutes of just installing everything my phone was hotter than Stifler's mom. Now for the KTM you do not have the option of a fully detailed navigation system on your screen. You have the KTM My Ride, it has changed to the KTM Connect or something. It's like a little arrow and a little ball, something like that. So it's not as detailed. But we all know that we are putting bigger GPS's on our bike anyway, as long as Apple doesn't come up with a Apple Bike Play. Apple Bike Play, now that will be cool. Now when it comes to safety features and electronics, yeah, the Ducati has got a lot. And the KTM also has the MSC, the motor slip regulation. So if you're going to do some off-road, you can actually regulate from one to nine how sideways you want your motorcycle to drift. That's pretty fun though. I just always turn it off, I'm like Rrr. For the wheels we got 18 inch in the back and 21 inch in the front on the KTM. And for the Ducati we also have 18 inch in the back and only 19 inch in the front. Now I do have to say riding both motorcycles on the road, there is not much difference in handling on the 19 inch or in the 21 inch. Not at all. As for the brakes, there is not much to say. Both of these monsters are running Brembos, as they should. When it comes to off-road and off-road only and off-road abuse, yeah, the KTM does take the victory crown. This thing is just made to throw around on dirt. It wouldn't even mind. I don't even mind dropping it. And I've dropped this thing a couple of times. Imagine dropping this beautiful specimen in some dirt or gravel roads and totally destroying this brushed aluminium and having some dents in this aluminium gas tank. Ooh. Now when it comes to the Ducati and its sky hook suspension, it is absolutely marvelous. It can actually lower the preload suspension to a minimum. So if you want to get on your bike or off your bike or stop at the traffic lights or even at lower speeds, the suspension can actually drop a lot. It's got 200 millimeter suspension travel in the front and 200 millimeter suspension travel in the rear. Now as for the KTM, it can absolutely do nothing of that. It is also manually adjustable, but it has 220 millimeter of suspension travel. And unless you're flying with this motorcycle like Chris Birch, you're never going to bottom out the suspension on these monsters. And this is of course one point where it actually gets really expensive. If you want to have like a fully automated suspension that can do all kinds of freaky things or you just want to have to set it manually, that does drive the price up. Now with a lot of these motorcycles, I have figured out that the center stand is somewhat really hard to get used to. Now with the KTM, you pull a little bit and it is on. As for the Ducati, but I mean getting it back on, if I go stand on this part, it is... It is god dang heavy for some reason. I have no idea why, but it is god dang heavy. Now when it comes to stock storage on the KTM, you got this, yeah, I broke it off a little bit. You got this stock storage thing with the USB port on the side right there. And you got to bend your fingers in like a very awkward position with the cable in your hand to, to actually get it in. Makes no sense whatsoever. Now KTM does say that this compartment will fit your uh, wallet, phone or sunglasses. Mm, yeah. Uh, Yeah. And as for the Ducati, we have this little storage box on top. And for some reason, it also has this weird way, sideways way of putting your USB in there. I also have to bend my... I, there must be a technique for it, but I, I don't get it. Now, when it comes to ground clearance, the KDM has 242 millimeters of ground clearance. That is nice for jumping some logs. And the Ducati, 235. So the KTM is just seven centimeters higher. Good pen though, what the hell is that? Now most of us are not giants, so seating height is kind of important. 
Now, as for the KDM, we have a standard of 880 millimeters, and the Ducati is actually between 870 and 890 as standard. But of course, both of these motorcycles have like a ton of options for lowered seats, higher seats, and you can even get some suspension kits to even lower the bike like that. So yeah, you got a lot of options. Now, everybody knows by now that I have 176 centimeters, and I mean, getting on these motorcycles is not a problem whatsoever, putting it straight up. And then I got a little bit of a tippy toes. It's not tippy tippy toes, but it's more like a solid good toe. Now on my KTM, I do have the lowered seat, but it's the lowered heated seat. So the lowered seats make it lower, but if you take the heated seat with the heating element, it becomes higher again. So it's like lowered and then more high with the heated element. So it actually, it's still the same, like 880 millimeters. Now the standard seat of the Ducati is adjustable from 870 to 890 millimeters. And I have to say, it is very easy to get on, a little bit better as the KTM, but like I said, the seat height is about the same. Not tippy tippy toes, but like a solid good toe. Oh, and a quick tip. If you have your handlebar to the left, it is actually a lot harder to get your bike up straight as if you turn it to the right. See that? Handlebar to the right. Smoky tip, what this channel isn't good for. God dang. Now, both of these motorcycles come equipped with a standard keyless go. But dang it, now we have to find a god dang place to put these key fobs so you don't lose them. Yeah, this keyless go system actually solved a problem that never existed. Do you guys like keyless go or do you prefer the old twist and turn? Now on the KTM, the fuel cap is electronically as standard. And on the Ducati, you actually need the key again. Where did I leave my key? But there is also like a 260 euro option and you can get it electronically as well. Now when it comes to my personal opinion about both bikes and you guys have been waiting for this moment, I mean, the Italian is absolutely gorgeous. It rides fantastically. For some reason, I just want to jump on it and ride to the south of Italy for like no reason whatsoever. It is that addictive to ride. It is smooth, it is fast, it is comfortable. I mean, the suspension, the sky suspension is absolutely bonkers. The bike is fast, like ridiculously fast. The shifting is like pow, pow, pow. So I absolutely love it, absolutely love it. But my beloved LC8 KTM with the Super Duke R engine, I mean, that thing is just a monster that wants to kill you every time you get on it. You really have to be gentle with it. It is that nutty, it is that crazy and also for really off-roading. I don't even feel bad dropping my own KTM on the ground. I could just drop it on the ground here, pick it back up and keep on going. I do not want to drop the Italian. That's like a fast gentleman with nice clothes on. And that one, that thing is just raw brute. So with that being said. Now, as for today's ride, you guys know what's going to happen. I always have to choose between my own KTM or the new bike. And in today's video, no, God damn it! I can't freaking do it. But seriously, if I'm going to Italy next week for a whole week and I'm going to be touring all week and I want to have a ton of fun, screw this. I absolutely love this Ducati. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. If you want to see my latest video, it is right over here. If you want to see my most favorite video, it is right over there. Subscribing is done over here. And if you want to become a full-time YouTuber, as you can see by my play buttons yourself, go to smokytube.com. And over there, I have the perfect all-in-one how-to YouTube course.